Okay, let's talk about a topic that uh, you start learning in pre-algebra and uh, any course beyond that, obviously Algebra 1, uh, Algebra 2, etc. You really need to know this. And really to uh, pass pre-algebra, this is a big main topic um, that we're going to be discussing in this particular video here. And what I want to focus on is the slope. Okay, so... If you are taking pre-algebra or Algebra 1, and you just want to make sure you understand this, well, this is a typical type of problem that you will see. So you certainly need to know how to do this. And if you don't know how to do this, or if you're just too quick to say, oh, I know how to do this, uh, and then you get it wrong, well, then, you know, you want to stick around for a few minutes. But basically what you're going to have is some sort of graph like so. And sometimes uh, there's graphing papers. Actually, oftentimes there's actual graphing uh, paper, so grids, if you will, and a line. So you'll kind of have to count out um, uh, the information that you need. But I'm kind of making this a little extra easy on you here. So what I want you to do, if you think you know how to do it, is to find the slope of this line shown here. Okay, so we're going to really test your understanding of slope and how to measure it uh, given kind of different uh, ways of, um, of information, how it's presented to you. So here, Obviously, we got a line, and we can see it's intercepting the y-axis at 3, and it's intercepting the x-axis at 5. So again, I want you to uh, tell me what the slope is, and this is, a, again, a very basic foundational type of concept in pre-algebra and beyond. Okay, so I'm going to get to the solution here in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have all the uh, main math courses that people take, like pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, geometry, college algebra. But I also have uh, many um, test preparation courses. I actually have over 100 plus different courses. So if you're studying for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, Acuplacer, Alex, uh, there's a ton of different uh, reasons that people study math outside of a math course, maybe like a teacher certification exam. Uh, so if you're in that kind of situation, you're trying to review middle and high school mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Also, I work with independent uh, learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you that are struggling in your class. But one thing you need to be doing to help yourself uh, if you're going to be learning mathematics, is you got to be taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me. Those students who take great math notes always, always get great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students are just like, nah, I don't really want to take notes. I'm, I'm not into taking notes. Well, uh, typically they'll end up looking kind of like this at the end of the year. They don't like their math grades. I'll tell you right now. There's no cheating the system. I mean, I was a student way back in the good old days. I took terrible notes. Matter of fact, I don't even think I took notes. But if I did take notes, they were like scribble scratch, and I couldn't even read what was going on. It takes a lot of effort and concentration and focus to take great notes. So that effort to take great math notes is what's going to keep you engaged and focused to uh, what the teacher is teaching you. Okay, So if you want an indication that you're paying attention in class, note-taking is it. But uh, as you're improving in your note-taking, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find a link to, uh, to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so we're going to get to this problem here. And again, the problem is tell me the slope of this line. What is the slope? Okay, so if you think you know what to do, go ahead and do it. But what is the slope? Well, it's often indicated by this little variable m, okay? And it's defined as the rise over the run. Now, I'm going to get into this in a second. Rise over the run of a line. But effectively, the slope is a number, okay? It's a, uh, a fraction. Let's just kind of roughly define it. It's some sort of fraction. But this fraction number, okay, tells us the steepness or the angle of a line. So if I want to kind of describe to you how steep this line is, well, then I want to know the slope, okay? So this line has a particular angle to it. So, for example, 
this line here has a different angle than this line. Okay, the lines like this have a different angle than these lines. So uh, let's just kind of do a quick, quick review of the slope, okay, in terms of we have a definition over here, but let's just get some other foundational things down here. So lines that run from left to right, that go kind of uphill in this manner from left to right, have a positive value slope. Okay, you need to know that, all right? So if uh, the, the slope of this line, whatever it is, it's going to be a positive value. Now, lines that fall this way, okay, from left to right, they're going downhill. These lines have a negative slope. So this line here is going to have a negative slope associated with it, all right? So these, again, are some basic foundational things that you need to know about the slope. Now, lines that are completely flat, okay, horizontal, what do you think their angle is? What do you think their slope is? Well, if you said, hmm, I don't think that line has a slope, you would be correct. Okay, so flat lines, horizontal lines have no slope. And then vertical lines have what? What's their slope? It's like, well, it's like a perfect sloping totally up. It doesn't really kind of make sense conceptually. And uh, you would be correct. Slo uh, the slope of uh, vertical lines are undefined. Okay, we can't define them. And there's some other reasons for that. But just these are the foundational things that you need to know about the slope. Okay, negative slope, positive slope flat slope, or no slope, zero slope, and then undefined slope. So this line here is a negative slope uh, situation that we're going to be dealing with. Now, let's get into the definition a little bit deeper. So the slope of a line, okay, we often, uh, well, we always use in algebra, this little variable m, is defined by the rise over the run. Let me go down here and just kind of sketch out a little quicker uh, Example, so we can see this rise over the run here. Okay, so let's take a line like this. All right, uh, let me draw this a little bit better. Okay, so let's say I want to define what the slope is. All right, great. So how can I do that? Well, what I can do is I can say, well, how about we just kind of measure, give you some sort of like ratio, okay, of like, well, this line, if it goes out this much, it will rise up this much, okay? And that's how we define the slope, the rise over the run. So the run of the line is we pick a spot on the line and we kind of form a right triangle, okay? We run out, we run out so much. So let's say this thing runs out six and for every six it runs out, it goes up or rises, let's say four, okay? So for every six it goes out, it rises four. So if it went out 12, it's going to go up eight, okay? So it's a ratio. So here the rise is four and the run is six. And of course, I can reduce this fraction to two-thirds. So the slope of this line is two-thirds, okay? Meaning that right here, right here and here, the run was three, okay? And the rise was two. Okay, so that ratio will always be the same. So if we have a line and kind of like uh, there's a grid on it, like graph paper, we can kind of count out and just take that line and kind of measure out by drawing any kind of right triangle anywhere along that line. And we can measure the rise and the run and then just reduce that fraction. And that will be the slope. Okay. All right. So if you were confused about that, hopefully that clears this up. But in this case, you might say, hmm, well, where is the run? Well, the run is right here, all right? So let's go ahead and just map this out here. So our run appears to be five. And what is our rise? Well, you might say, well, the rise looks like it's three, okay? So if you said the slope is three-fifths, well, you're close. But again, you're not correct because we said that the slope is going to be negative. Now, here's the deal. If the... If the rise is dropping, okay, if we can see it dropping, that becomes negative, okay? If it's increasing like so, all right, like this was a three and it's increasing, that's positive. So you need to know, um, let me just uh, draw this out a little bit nicer. Okay, so our slope is negative three fifths, okay? So our rise here is really a negative three as it's going down and then our run is a five. But what you're going to see in many problems is you're just going to see the grid. Okay. You'll have to pick two points 
And remember, you want to form kind of a right triangle. You don't want to pick a point here, then a, like another point like this information and then like this information right here. You need to pick a right triangle and measure the corners or, you know, the, um, uh, the length and the width of that right triangle, this side and this side, whatever the triangle might be, it could be this side or this side. That is how you can calculate the slope without any information. So oftentimes you'll see this problem here. I put in um, three and five just to kind of make it simpler uh, for you, but you need to know how to calculate the slope. Now let's go ahead and just quickly look at another scenario that you'll need to know how to do. So let's say I have this point and this point. I could have said, well, this is the point zero three, and this is the point five zero. Okay, so if we really want to get into more, um, you know, foundational things about algebra and the slope, you'll need to be able to take this a step further. So we know the slope is the rise over the run, but you also need to know the slope formula. Okay, which is going to be the difference of the y's. So usually it's like y two minus y one over x2 minus x1, and we'll just kind of save this for an additional video. I actually have tons of videos on calculating slope in my um, algebra and pre-algebra playlist, but you'll need to be able to calculate the slope given two points. Now, here it's pretty easy. I can kind of just uh, straight away just calculate the rise and the run, so you need to be able to interpret the slope that way, but you also need to be able to calculate, calculate the slope given two points that are on the line. So slope is a huge topic in pre-algebra and algebra one. You definitely have to know it. You won't be able to graph lines or find the equations of lines or linear equations without fully understanding the slope. So hopefully this was a nice quick review or practice problem for you. Again, um, you know, watching this video is uh, definitely, hopefully helpful, but you need to follow through and practice this stuff, okay? And really start immerse, immersing, immersing yourself, excuse me, um, you know, in the topic of slope. If you're just kind of still understanding it, you're like, well, okay, I kind of understand it, but you want to take it to the next level and learn all this other stuff about slope. That's a critical, critical topic in pre-algebra and algebra. And again, you can find a lot more videos on this in my pre-algebra and algebra one playlist on my channel. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if in some way this video helps you out, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for well over 10 years at this point. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized on my channel and various playlists, all there to help you. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. But if you want my best math help, just follow those links in the description of this video. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.